I'm Dr. Julia Schofield, a consultant dermatologist in Lincolnshire. As part of Psoriasis Awareness Week, I'm answering some of your pre-submitted questions on guttate psoriasis. Guttate psoriasis is also known as teardrop or raindrop psoriasis and is a widespread rash of small spots. It can occur at any age, but does tend to occur most often in children, adolescents and younger adults. Usually, guttate psoriasis is fairly widespread across the trunk and limbs. It will often clear up after weeks, several weeks or months, depending a little bit on how quickly treatment is started. Sometimes, however, it can go away of its own accord. There are some studies that suggest there is a possible link between the influence of vaccination and a flare of psoriasis, but the studies are small and not particularly reliable. So this is a difficult question to answer, particularly as your personal experience is that you had a flare of your condition after a flu jab, and this is going to influence your views. So you need to think carefully about your risk of catching flu and its potential impact on your health and the health of those around you. And balance the risk of the vaccine causing a flare of your psoriasis with the risks of developing flu and the potential complications that might arise for you and your family if you were to catch flu and become unwell. So there's no easy answer to this one, I'm afraid, and flu can be a pretty miserable condition for you and other members of your family. The widespread nature of this type of psoriasis means that we often have to use treatments over very large areas. And we want to be careful not to use large quantities of strong topical steroids. This is one of the reasons that I prefer to use light treatment for people with guttate psoriasis, because it reduces the amount of topical steroids that we might have to use. If I am prescribing a topical steroid, then I would normally recommend something called Betnovate RD, which is quarter strength of Betnovate or Elecon ointment, which is another name, which is Mometazone Furoate. The other important thing is that you should always be using a good moisturiser or emollient, as we call them. And I would suggest that you use something like Cetraban or Diprobase or even E45. This is a really interesting and difficult question to answer. There's certainly a lot of evidence that guttate psoriasis can be triggered or preceded by a throat infection, which is due to a bacteria called Streptococcus. We know, we also know that if you have your tonsils removed, you may reduce the likelihood of de developing significant throat infections with bacteria such as the streptococcus. So that would sound as if the logical thing to do is to have your tonsils removed and that this might be a good idea. Unfortunately, we don't have any good studies that confirm whether or not removing the tonsils is effective in reducing the likelihood of you developing a flare of guttate psoriasis. So I think we should turn this question on its head a bit and ask the question, what is the effect of sore throats on your general well-being? So, for example, if you are having regular tonsillitis or regular sore throats that are interfering with your quality of life and making you feel repeatedly unwell and you have guttate psoriasis, there would be a very strong case for being considered for having tonsillectomy, which is removal of your tonsils. You just need to think a bit carefully about this because a lot of sore throats are due to viruses and antibiotics won't be helpful for those. And the streptococcus will not be involved and therefore will not be relevant in terms of triggering 
or making your psoriasis worse. So it's sometimes quite useful to have a throat swab before you start on antibiotics if you've got a significant throat infection in order to sort out whether or not streptococcal infections are the problems problem here. And I think my final point on this question would be that you should not expect that having your tonsils removed will necessarily cure your tendency to develop psoriasis. So you need to be looking at the bigger picture in terms of recurrent throat infections. Ideally, if you have a flare of widespread gut ache psoriasis, you should be encouraging your GP to refer you urgently to the local dermatology department. And the, the message should be that you have widespread psoriasis and that you need to be seen with a view to light treatment. We don't recommend that you use a home sunbed. The light treatment that we use in the hospital dermatology departments is carefully measured. It's a very specific narrow wavelength. The sunlight, the, the sunlight waves and the ultraviolet light that you get from a sunbed are much less carefully measured and they're much broader wavelengths. Why does that matter? Because actually if you have too much sunshine then you increase your risk of the development of skin cancer. So if you're going to have light treatment for psoriasis and in particular for gut ache psoriasis where it works well, it would be better for you to have that in a controlled environment in a dermatology department supervised by a suitably trained phototherapist. Gut ache psoriasis usually occurs in children and young adults. It's often triggered by a streptococcal sore throat in people who have a genetic predisposition for psoriasis. In other words, people with a family history of psoriasis. It does, however, often resolve spontaneously. And certainly, in my experience, not everyone that has had gut ache psoriasis goes on to develop plaque psoriasis afterwards, but some people do. In my experience, gut ache psoriasis is rare on the face. It tends to be much more on the body. If it does occur on the face, we would treat it in the same way as we would treat any type of psoriasis on the face. We would advise moisturizers, and we would suggest the use of 1% hydrocortisone ointment in the first instance. In some patients, we might consider the use of something called tacrolimus, 0.1%. Its other name is protopic. This is a very useful treatment for facial psoriasis, and it is not a topical steroid. Remember, though, that not all treatments that are prescribed for psoriasis on the trunk will be appropriate for the use on the face, as the skin is much more sensitive. So you may need to take advice from your doctor and be absolutely confident about which products should be used on which part of the body. I always say to patients that the treatment of a person's psoriasis is very much related to the impact it has on that patient and we have to develop a personalized approach to each individual and finding a treatment or a combination of treatments can sometimes be a process of trial and error we're likely to start treatment with creams that or ointments that are used on the skin these are what we call topical treatments and these will include steroid creams and ointments vitamin d applications and coal tar products. But if these are unsuccessful, we would often use phototherapy, which is light treatment. It's important to moisturize your skin regularly, as this will help not only make the skin feel more comfortable, but it will also often improve the absorption of the other treatments that you are being prescribed, such as topical steroids. 
If you're referred to a dermatology service, it's likely that you would be offered ultraviolet light therapy to treat your gut ache psoriasis. This is a very effective treatment for gut ache psoriasis, but you need to be aware that it would involve you attending either the local dermatology department at the local hospital or a community dermatology facility, probably three times a week for six to eight weeks. The answer to this is that the most common trigger of all is going to be a streptococcal infection, usually a streptococcal sore throat. Gut ate psoriasis is not usually triggered by um, pregnancy, tattoos or sun exposure. It is important to recognise, however, that there is a type of psoriasis called small pattern psoriasis, which can look quite like gut ate psoriasis, but is not actually triggered by streptococcal infections and is more like plaque psoriasis, but with very small patches. Now, this type of psoriasis can be much more persistent and will be triggered by the usual factors that can trigger plaque psoriasis, such as emotional upset, pregnancy or other factors that are known to trigger psoriasis. My experience is that most flares will settle with three, within three or four months. Some people will continue to have flares from time to time and occasionally gut ate psoriasis will evolve into all the other forms of psoriasis. <laughs>